Hello, this is Dr. Ben Finio. I am joined today by Mr. Moose, and in this video, we'll be showing you how to give a presentation in Zoom. This video is primarily intended for students or maybe employees who might be used to attending Zoom meetings and listening to other people talk, but now it's your turn to give a presentation. So maybe you have a final project and you have to give a presentation about it, or it's your turn to give a weekly report in a company meeting. So now you are going to be the center of attention and maybe need to share your screen. So in this video, we'll go through five tips for doing that. Number one, good lighting. This one is pretty straightforward. You want to do your best to make sure you have a light source in front of you and not behind you. This is going to make sure that your face is evenly illuminated and you don't have sharp shadows or a bright light in the background that's going to wash things out. For example, right now I have my computer facing a window so my face is nice and bright. If you go back to some of my earlier videos before I rearranged my office furniture, you'll see that I had windows to the side and behind me causing a shadow on one half of my face and a bright spot in the background. So to simulate poor lighting as an example, I have closed the window blind in front of me and turned on all of the lights behind me. You can now see that my background is very bright and my face appears darker. So you might be limited in your ability to do this depending on the furniture layout in your house, but you can do your best to rotate your desk or where you're sitting. So you're either facing a window or a light source like a ceiling light or a lamp instead of having it behind you or to the side. Number two, and this is one that I am clearly violating, avoid a cluttered or busy background that could be a distraction to other people when you're giving your presentation. So you can see my office is a complete mess. If I was giving a formal presentation, I would probably want to clean that up first. Similarly, if you are, say, in your bedroom and you haven't put your clothes away, you could rotate so your back is facing to a wall and people are just seeing a solid background instead of your messy bedroom. If you are sharing your house with other people during the pandemic and they might be walking by in the background, you would want to try and rotate your camera so that the viewers won't see people walking by behind you. That's closely related to the first point about which way you're facing for good lighting. So again, depending on the layout of your house, that might not be possible. Zoom does have a virtual background option. So if you are going to have some unavoidable background clutter or activity, you can go down to the up arrow next to the stop video button and select choose virtual background. This will allow you to either upload one of your own photos or choose one of Zoom's built in photos that it will put as a background behind your head. So this will, in theory, hide any business or stuff going on behind you. You want to be a little careful with this for two reasons. One, it's not perfect. You see it's having a little trouble detecting the borders around my hair and the chair here. And two, you don't want to pick a background that's actually distracting or worse than your real physical background. So there are some cool ones in here. For example, some of them are actually video clips that'll play this palm tree blowing in the background. But again, you don't want something that's actually going to distract people from your face and your presentation. So use this as kind of a last resort or just choose a plain, simple one that isn't going to be a distraction. Number three, eliminate as much background noise as possible. Now, especially during the pandemic where you might have a sibling also doing online school from home or a spouse working from home, this one can be pretty difficult if you can't be in a room by yourself. Other people might be in their own meetings, they might be making lunch, there could be babies crying, dogs barking, who knows. So hopefully your teacher or your boss will be understanding about this. I think people have generally adapted their expectations to the fact that people are working from home. But you still want to do what you can. For example, if you live on a busy street and there are cars driving by, you might want to close the windows. I have a washing machine running on spin cycle right outside my office door, so I could have waited to run the laundry until after I was done with my meeting. And if you can, go into your own room with the door closed so you're not going to hear other people talking in the background, that's best. But again, we know that's not possible for everyone, so hopefully people will adapt their expectations there. Number four, this one is probably the biggest difference from what you would do for an in-person presentation. Try not to move around too much. Now, this can be counterintuitive and difficult, especially if you're a lecturer like me. When I'm actually teaching in a classroom, I like moving around, using body language, hand gestures, and everything. But the problem with that, if you're at a desk with a fixed microphone, is that when you move your head around, the volume of your voice is going to change because the distance from your mouth to the microphone is changing. So I have my microphone sitting on my desk here. You might have a webcam or just the microphone built into your laptop. So if you're turning your head or moving around a lot, and you should be able to hear this as you're watching this video, the distance from my mouth to the microphone changes, and as I get farther away, my voice gets quieter. So that can be distracting for people who are trying to listen to you, and if you get too far away, it can make you hard to hear, or if you get too close, it can actually get too loud and kind of hurt people's ears. So 
Again, it's counterintuitive. You think you should be moving around and animated when you're giving a presentation, but you do want to try and keep your head still. Even if you're using your hands, try to keep your head fixed relative to your microphone to keep your volume constant. Number five, this one only applies if you're going to be sharing your screen. Now, I'm not going to go over all the details of sharing your screen in this video. I have an entirely separate video that goes through all of that. But if you're going to be sharing your screen, you should close absolutely everything on your computer other than Zoom and whatever you're going to share. This will get rid of the chance that you're accidentally going to share something embarrassing like your email or your web browser history or messages from a program like Slack. Because even if you don't accidentally share the entire window, when you go to hit the share screen button, Zoom shows pretty much everything that's open on your computer here. So it can be difficult to find things if you have a million programs open, and you don't want to accidentally have somebody be able to read even in just a little thumbnail, maybe the text from the subject line of your email or something might be visible. So close all that stuff in advance, then it becomes much easier to find the content you want to share and share that as part of your presentation. So as always, I hope you found this video helpful, especially if you are doing school or work from home due to the COVID-19 pandemic. If you have a question, a comment, or a suggestion for another tutorial, please leave a comment below this video. Thank you.